Good morning, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. Um, we are doing Bible study this morning, and we are using Charles Stanley's book. It is in. The, it will be in the description of the post if you're interested in buying the book and following along every day. Or um, you don't have to buy the book. You can just listen. Uh, there's a Kindle version, and then there's a hardback version. Yesterday, I failed to get on here and do a Bible study. Shame on me. Um, it was about ceasing to strive, and I'm going to go ahead and review it as well as today's, um, and this is under the Charles Stanley book, because the scripture that we're reading for today's is really good to back up what we read from yesterday. Uh, so I'm going to do that because it makes sense to do it, in my opinion. Um, yesterday's was December the 20th. It says, cease striving. It says, cease striving and know that I am God. And that comes out of Psalms 46, verse 10. And it says, does your world sometimes feel it has, oh, excuse me. And it being Christmas time, this probably applies to more than, more than, more people than it doesn't apply to. So it should apply to almost all of us this time of the year. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and read it, and then I'm going to read the psalm, because it really backs this up, and then we're going to do today's. Um, it says, does your world sometimes feel as if it's been turned upside down? If so, how can you respond victoriously to the challenges you face each day? The key is in today's verse. Cease striving and know that I am God. Psalms 46.10. Because it says you must stop striving and take hold of the fact that God is in control. And that's where a lot of what a lot of us fail to do is give it to him and know that he's in control. Even if it's something bad, it's not it's not a bad thing to say God is in control of your life because he really is, especially if you talk to him and he's a part of your life um, and you're a child of God and you're born again, that even makes it even more applicable. Okay, it says, if you stop, all the plates you have spinning will fall. But to cease striving does not mean you do nothing. What it means is that you stop fretting, trying to take care of it all with your limited wisdom. And remember, we do have a limited wisdom. Wisdom comes from the Lord. Um, it says, instead, you actively watch, wait, and most importantly, listen to God. In other words, to cease striving, you must trust God, be patient, submit your will to his, and focus on Jesus rather than your circumstances. That reminds me of the study we did a few days ago when it talks about Paul. It says that he lived above his the circumstances. Um and in other words, he didn't let the circumstances control his actions and how he felt. So we need to do the same. I had a message pop up. Um, it says you should don't just talk. Oh, wait, wait a minute. In other words, to cease striving, you must trust God, be patient, submit your will to his and focus on Jesus rather than the circumstances. You do so by getting along with God continually, waiting for him to speak to your heart. Don't just talk, really listen to him. Likewise, meditate on scripture. We all know in order for you to listen to God, not the Holy Spirit, because we have him in us all the time, but to really listen to what God has to say, we must get in the scripture of the book, because that's how God actually talks to us says, um, meditate on the scripture, which helps you see your circumstances from the Lord's perspective. Um, and courageously say no to the things that pull you away from being still in God's presence. Can you be still and cease striving today? It is important that you do so because everything in your upside down world can benefit from his guidance. He has important things to tell you. Okay, I'm going to read this psalm that goes with today's because <clears throat> a lot of us have a hard time believing that God is in control. Um, and even my mama was that way. I can remember 
Um, she had a hard time believing that God was in control when something bad happened, but I truly believe he is. Um, not the fact that he um, is the one that does the actual sin of hurting somebody or killing somebody or unless he's wanting to bring them home. I'm talking about like in a, in a car accident or something like that when a drunk driver hits you. Mama had a hard time believing God was in control, but let me just say this. Um, God is in control because he has more power on this earth than the devil does. And, and um, so if he so intended, he could have turned the wheel of the drunk driver. Um, God allows some things to happen in our life whether it's good or bad, and we have to accept the fact that that is the truth, and he is in control. He's God. That takes a lot of the burden. A lot of people want to blame God for stuff, um, but they don't really realize that God has a lot more to do than just worry about every little thing that happens in our own lives. I mean, the only reason we're here really is to glorify him um, and to bring praise to his name. And if we're failing to do that or somebody in our life is failing to do that and he decides to take them home, um, there's not a whole lot that we can argue about. Okay. Um, but let me read Psalms 95 because it talks about how much God is in control. And this Psalm in verse six, which is, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord. Our maker is the, actual uh, verse for today's reading. The first reading was yesterday's because I failed to come on here and do it for y'all. So this is Psalms 95 and I want you to listen to what it says about our God and excuse me, and it'll help you understand that he really is in control of everything. It says, Oh, come, let us sing it to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise and to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all little God, little G gods. In his hand, now listen to this. This talks about what's in God's hands, y'all. And you know, when we we're little, we sang the world, the, the song, he's got the whole world in his hands. And as we grow up and we become adults, I think we forget about that song and forget about how powerful that song really is and how we're supposed to trust in that song. But listen to this. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the pro provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work. Now, I'm going to start over because I kind of paused there, so you'll kind of get the gist of it. So what, this is actually uh, in red, like the words of Jesus. Um, and it says, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice. So it's telling us plainly that we are the sheep, we are in his hand. The world is in his hands, y'all. Just like the song we sang when we were kids. But he's telling us this. Harden not your heart as in the pro provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work. Forty years long, I was grieved with this generation. And said, it is a people that do error in their heart. And they have not known my ways until whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Now, this is a beautiful verse. It's telling you he's in control, but he's also warning us. He is our God and he lets us know that he is a God of wrath as well and that we are to trust him and lean on his ways. And if we don't, 
um, he can swear his wrath not to enter into his rest. And listen, we need to be able to lean on him and and have him to rest on. So it's up to us whether or not we choose the wrath or the rest. Okay, so decide today which one you plan to choose. Are you going to choose God's wrath or are you going to choose to rest in the Lord? Um, I'd much rather choose to rest in the Lord. And I can guarantee you one thing. Our life on this earth is so much more abundant when we choose to. And this is called choosing him. And this is how it falls in line with these. Both of these Bible studies were uh, very uh, in line with Psalms 95 as well. Both of them, even if 95 was not the verse for yesterday's. Now it says to choose him. Now that we've talked about being in his rest or being his, in his wrath, we're going to talk about choosing him. So, and this will be the end of our Bible study. It says, come let us worship and bow down and let us kneel before the Lord our maker. When you choose to follow Jesus, some of your choices may be misunderstood. For example, taking time away from pressing matters and to be still and to meditate on God's word can seem indulgent and even irresponsible to those who have a different priority. Take Martha's reaction to Mary. For example, when Jesus visited their home, Mary chose to sit at his feet. But Luke 10, 40 testifies, Martha came up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do the serving alone? Then tell her to help me. Because Martha was preoccupied with doing things for the Lord, she failed to see the importance of fellowshipping with the Lord. So Jesus answered her. He said, Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There's only one thing worth being concerned about, and Mary has discovered it. It is easy to become so preoccupied with life that your fellowship with God takes a back seat. Yet your relationship with Jesus is the most important one in your life. He gives you the spiritual uh, substance to tackle the challenges with wisdom and grace. So do not fret over what others say. At the end of the day, when all else is forgotten, your relationship with Christ is what really counts. Um, I failed yesterday to bring out the Bible study. Um, it's uh, not a blessing that I did that, but God worked it out because it did go in line with today's. And so I hope y'all have enjoyed uh, reading the two. And I, and I had to ask him last night to forgive me for not bringing Bible study to y'all yesterday because I did let the worldly um, things that I had pressing go before him. I'm no different than anybody else. I am um, in my flesh and I am not perfect. And so remember that none of us are. Um, none of us are perfect and all of us need God's help every single day. So we're going to say our prayers and it was so good to have everybody here this morning. Um, and it looks like Kathy Teal, Velda Leopard. I'm going to just say who's here this morning. Linda Looney, D.I. Morgan, Marilyn King. Marilyn's always on here. I'm, I'm so proud of you, Marilyn, because you, uh, all of you ladies make it uh, even a brighter day for me when I see that you care and want to listen to what God has to say um, and start our day. We're going to say our prayers, and um, I will see you guys tomorrow. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today. We thank you for Psalm 95. We thank you for the man that pinned it on the paper and the Holy Spirit that guided him to show us that we are in your hand and we are your sheep and you are our shepherd. And may we follow you as a sheep would follow his shepherd. May we look for guidance for with every step we make and every choice that may, we make throughout each day. May we put you first. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a blessed day, and I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching Real Southern Woman, where we feed the soul with God's word. Bye, y'all.